What's up, guys? So today on the podcast, we have another rules for jiu-jitsu, um, and we will have a fun project coming up for you guys in the, the near future uh, using some of these rules. But uh, rules for jiu-jitsu today, and the rule is going to be that you're going to keep training private. I'll explain more about what I mean, but this is a really important one. This is something that um, is one of the reasons why I haven't posted a ton of rolling videos on my YouTube channel and Instagram recently. Um, and I'll tell you more about it. But before we get into the podcast, big thanks to our sponsors that help make this thing happen so you guys can listen to us every week. Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web is the CBD of my choice, the CBD of Eugene's choice. They became a sponsor several years ago uh, after we used their products. Me and Eugene both loved them. And so we've been a, a fan ever since and we've been supporting them ever since. Again, this is part of my one of the supplements that I keep in my recovery toolbox so to speak and i use it at nighttime sometimes in the day sometimes uh if someone that's um i'll share this with you guys is someone that's uh has a tendency to sometimes feel a little on edge during during different periods of my life we'll just say it that way uh, i feel like sometimes a, a d dose of cbd can kind of help make me feel a little bit more grounded and a little bit more centered. We'll say it that way. And uh, again, your, your results could vary, could be different, but it's been something that's been helpful to me. So uh, I use it daily, usually at nighttime for recovery. But if I'm feeling a little on edge that day, sometimes I'll use it uh, earlier in the day. I think I think you do it that way, don't you, Eugene? Yeah, I, uh, I use it in the mornings, but I've really found as of late, like sometimes I'll forget to take the gummies before mm -hmm. bed. Yeah. I don't sleep as well. So I think when I take the gummies, I really, uh, I feel like I really sleep a lot better. So okay. I, that's just for me. I feel like I, I get a deeper, um, I mean, I just better sleep. Yep. So uh, again, there's some other stuff and I'll probably do a video of it and talk about some of the stuff that I'm using or maybe do a podcast about some of the other sure. supplements I take with sleep because um, I've tried a bunch of different ones this past year. Uh, but CBD is one of the ones that's always in the mix. And so again, uh, I encourage you to try them out if you've never tried out CBD products before. Uh, again, I know it's a, it's a crazy unregulated market and there's stuff that you know, just there's just crazy stuff out there. And so I encourage you to whether or not you get it from Charles Webb or not to get it from a reputable company. But again, if you've never used CB products and you'd like to save some money trying it out from a top notch company, try out Charles Webb's product. Go to their website at charlesweb.com. And then the promo code is jujitsu20 for 20% 20 off the order uh, again on whatever you buy. And so it's a great deal. And again, right now I typically use a tincture or occasionally I'll use gummies that they have. And again, both are great. Um, and so check them out. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Matt at Epic Roll. Epic Roll is a BJJ apparel and gear company created by a black belt. Well, he's, he was originally a brown belt, but he's a black belt now. Created by a black belt for jiu-jitsu practitioners, right? Again, um, <laughs> this is just one of the things for me. I'm, I'm, I'm very sensitive to these subjects. And so sometimes I see where like weird stuff gets marketed to people. And it's just by people making a buck on someone. And so Matt's... Matt's very passionate about the work that he does with the gear that he makes. First off, he makes all the designs. So, you know, he literally like pours his creative energies into making the designs on the shirts uh, and the gear and everything else. And I think it shows because I think his designs are really cool. I think they're very unique and they're designs that you like, you kind of want to wear. They're not, they're not too over the top. Most of the time, they're pretty cool, pretty chill. And at the same time, the shirts and stuff, everything's uh, high quality. And then if any of you guys have ever received a package from Matt, you've probably received all kinds of little stickers and extras and stuff like that. And again, I think that comes from the passion that he he's in it. Obviously, you know, we're all out here making a buck, right? Trying to make a living and do our thing. But there's also a thing where it can it can still be a very passionate thing for you where you want to deliver to people and give them something super cool. And so I think that's his main driving force for anytime I've talked to him. And so if you've never checked out any of his stuff at epicrobjj.com, I encourage you to do so. Go check out some of his gear, some of his shirts, some of his apparel, see what you like. And if you find something you do like, you can save 15% on the order by using the promo code jujitsu at checkout. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is a premier men's grooming product company. It used to be pretty much everything was below the belt. You know, it's like ball trimmers and ball deodorants and stuff like that, which obviously they still make and all the products are great. Uh, but again, they've got everything from head to toe as far as colognes, deodorants, uh, shampoos, body washes, nose trimmers. I mean, razors, the whole thing. Um, and again, I've used I've used almost everything that they have at some point. And I like everything. The colognes, the body washes, and the shampoos smell great. Um, you know, the like the deodorants, they don't have any weird, funky, like aluminums and stuff like, or, you know, metals and stuff yeah. in them that a lot of times are present in deodorants. And again, I'm one of those kind of weird hippie people that like 
<laughs> I just think it's probably not the best idea to put nope. this stuff right right by our lip uh, lip <laughs> system, right? It's not probably not the best idea. And you think about your skin, you put all that stuff on your skin, your skin is a giant organ that absorbs stuff. And uh, again, I've been using the trimmer for several years now, and it's it's a good trimmer. The damn thing holds a charge like crazy. Bro. I know it does, right? <laughs> like so, <laughs> so for like like here's an example. Pull out our pull out the manscape one there at the, at the I'm not with Eugene in the uh, the studio today, but pull the this one out. One. So right. that sucker's been that's one of the 4.0 lawnmowers. They're yep. uh, they're they're trimmer that I use for my beard down to my balls, and that B2B. sucker. It's been sitting there for like it's been yeah, like, what, it's, a year it's like and a half. Old display model. Yeah, we just use it for display. Let's see and if then we can hear it. Still going. Man. It's still going. Lights still thing. on. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> the damn thing holds a charge. So like I use mine mainly, like I use my my trimmer, obviously, to trim whatever. Most of the time, most often it's for my beard to keep it trimmed up. Um, and then like, you know, like if, if I get like furry around my chest and stuff like that, I'll trim yeah. it up. Uh, well, just trims it up. But anyway, like I, we we have the one I've I rarely have to charge that thing, bro. Like I get it charged up and then it just holds its charge. It's a really good product. Um, and so again, whether or not you guys want some, a new trimmer or you just want some products like deodorants, body washes, things like that, that smell amazing. Check them out at manscaped.com and the promo code is jujitsu20 for 20% off the order and you get free shipping. It's a great deal uh, on all their products. So give them a, give them a look. And also, guys, if you want to support the podcast directly, you can do so by going to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Jiu-Jitsu podcast. Uh, upon joining now, we've we've changed a few things up. You will get a seminar that I recorded several years ago and showing some of my best techniques, some of my favorite techniques that I did. Uh, the seminar itself, you, you, if you wanted to go to, it was 80 bucks or more. And again, it's available mm -hmm. to you as a free bonus for joining up to the Patreon. And again, and when you join the Patreon, you get access to tons of exclusive content that we don't release anywhere else. It's been going on for several years. And Eugene, did you just upload the warm up? Yeah, the warm ups in there. It's the the one that we did at the camp. Cool. And so the warm up guys, um, here's another thing that we just added to it or we've added to it. Um, we have a warm up that Eugene recorded at one of our seminars, one of my camps recently. And if I want it, warming up is one of those things where a lot of people are always curious about ways to do it or even stretching and be more mobile. People want to know like what's some good stretches. I told Eugene before this camp, I said, listen, bro, I just want you to come up with like 20 minutes, 25 minutes of like the the simplest best stretches that you could give for someone that's doing jiu-jitsu that's going to help target the muscular imbalances that we face because we all know that jiu-jitsu kind of has it creates muscular imbalances right sure. um it's just the way it is and so i was like give us just 20 25 minutes of simple stretches that you could do to deal with those particular areas he did it and what's so funny is we've done this with several different camps and every time they're done doing them they're like man i feel great like they're like, I've, I, I feel so loose right now. And so if you guys are a little bit tight, if you don't do enough stretching or whatever, and you would like 20 to 25 minutes of simple stretches that you could do at home or wherever by following along with Eugene's uh, instructions, then if you go to the Patreon, you can get access to it. And again, it's a really straightforward, simple stretching. And along with getting that bonus, you'll also get all the other content. So check it out at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And uh, last but not least, guys, if you want to become a part of my two crew email list and get my daily email newsletter, you can do so by going to jujitsu.net slash join J O I N. When you join, you'll get three free jujitsu eBooks and you'll also get my daily email newsletter, which includes, you know, my philosophical ramblings and ideas on mm -hmm. training as well as um, special offers that I don't release anywhere else. Uh, and special discounts and stuff like that. So check that out. Um, and guys, with that said, let's jump into this podcast. So to get right into it, this idea of keeping training private, what do I mean by that? Well, there's a thing where we're all aware of this. When we train with people, there it's a very vulnerable situation that we're in, right? Because when you train with people, you're doing something that you really like. And a lot of times you get very into it. You get very attached to being trying to be better at it. You get um, focused on being better at it. And it means a lot to you. And so when you lose, it doesn't feel so good. And where this is coming from is... I personally have stopped recording most of my rolling sessions primarily. I'll record some of them from time to time, but
but primarily because I don't want my students to always like if I've got my video camera guy going, I don't want them to be in a situation where they're now the training is no longer private and they can't just experiment. They can't just try stuff out because they're like, oh man, I'm going to be in front of 300,000 followers that might see me rolling. I want to do a good job. I've also found with me sometimes where people want to record me rolling with them. And it's like one of those things where it instantly, it can't just it, like, I don't always want to roll to the death. And instantly it kind of creates that unfortunate environment where you can't just, because now it's like, we're trying to look a certain way in front of a camera. And for you at the gym, you may not have cameras going on. So although some people do, they record the rules, but you could be in a situation where you could talk about it. That's one of the things I remember years ago having a situation between a couple of my guys where I had to talk to one of the, the students and like, hey, listen, bro, like, don't talk about tapping. Don't tap and talk about it. Because that's not a good idea. Because again, that that we're in this vulnerable situation. And if we start talking about tapping people out, like kind of gloating about it, then it destroys the trust. It destroys that connection and that bond that you have with your training partner. And then when you roll with each other, it can't be, it's no longer about training. It's about you're going to try to beat them because you don't want to hear this dude talk about beating you, that kind of thing. And so I think it's really important to keep your training private. Recently, I was asked by a member, uh, not a member, but a uh, well member of the Chew Crew email list. And he was telling me that there was someone at his gym that records the roles and then posts them on Instagram. And he's like, he's records the roles and he's like, man, he goes, I don't, he's like, I don't really want to roll with him because I don't want to end up like, you know, cause again, he doesn't want to like be caught on something or whatever and being end up on Instagram, like having everybody stare at him getting beat. And he doesn't want to be something where like the guy's gloating about like, look at this arm bar caught on this guy. And so he says it kind of d deters him from wanting to roll with them. And he was asking for advice on that, you know, and, and again, so I, I think that it's one of these things where we've talked about this before. When you train, it's training. It's not necessarily about always winning. And that becomes difficult when you feel like you have to be on. You don't feel like you can just go in and do your thing. You don't feel like you can go in and make mistakes because you don't want to end up on the internet for everybody to see. Not that it matters. Of course, this is all ego. But again, all of us have egos, right? We all have them. You don't really exist if you don't have one. And there's a lot of danger not having one. But at the same time, we can all understand that nobody really wants to have their nose rubbed in the fact that they just got beat. Nobody enjoys that. Even if you're very relaxed and you can accept loss, it's one thing to have criticism and critiques. It's another thing to like have someone just like blatantly put it out there. And it's not not very enjoyable. And I think that it creates a a detrimental sort of in, or a bad a bad environment at a gym. We'll say it that way. It creates an environment that isn't going to be positive for the long term uh, as far as training goes. Because then you're not really training. Now we're basically competing against each other. Uh, for people to see. And so that's the idea today, like with, with this rules for jiu-jitsu, keep your training private. You don't talk about tapping people unless it's to like help them out. You know, maybe you're like, Hey, I felt like I could do this. Like maybe you could try this next time and you see if you could help them improve. Right. I do that all the time. If I, if I catch a student in a submission several times, I'll say, Hey, listen, man, you're leaving your arm out there. Right. That's why I, that's why I submitted you that three times yep. or whatever. Um, and you know, it doesn't need to be posted up all the time. You know, if the person's cool with that and they're okay with that, that's fine. Um, but again, you know, you want to have training that can be private, where you guys can be like making mistakes and nobody has to know about it. Um, and again, there are times where you can record stuff and it's completely fine and there's no big deal about it. But at the same time, keep that in mind with the other person's perspective. You know, you're not trying to slam dunk on your training partners and then post it online um, for likes or for attention or something like that, you know? And the one thing I will say is like, if you do end up getting submitted or if you're, if you're putting up videos and you get some submission, if someone submits you, make sure that it makes it up there too. Like mm -hmm. don't shy away from putting up your losses either. Um, if you're going to do that, cause it, again, that would look really like terrible in your part where you're going to post people getting beat, but not yourself. Mm -hmm. And, but I, but, but I think it's just a better idea to keep most of your training private. Um, and keep it, you know, between you and that person, because it's, it's a very, it's a very vulnerable, intimate thing that we do. And again, this is a, something that we're all dealing with. And again, I can tell you from a lot of questions I've got, you know, when people violate that and they make things public, whether that be 
they're rolling online, they start talking about it, it really creates a nasty effect in the gym. And um, you can think about this kind of goes back to one of the podcasts we talked about previously, where I was talking about um, an artist, a writer, and he was talking about having a private space to, to work to do his work, you need a private space to do your work as a martial artist, right? Because like he was saying in his, his interview, the guy was talking about the fact that you know, you have to have a place where you can just try stuff out as a writer and nobody's ever going to get to see it. And sometimes it's going to be absolute, absolute junk, but you have a place for that. And then if something good comes from it, then you take that and you make that public later on. That's kind of what you want with your training. You have this place where you can try stuff out and if it's complete junk and you get beat, whatever, it's completely okay. And then the stuff that works really well and the stuff that starts to kind of improve then you can take that later on and, and make that part of your public game part of your public competitions or whatever it might be um you know and, and so that would be my idea on it when did you decide like because I, I mean I, I never cared like it was always having fun we don't it always be kind of lighthearted. We, if, if you're recording roles at the gym yeah it was always lighthearted. we were always kind of like playing moving around it wasn't like kill or be killed type thing but when did you decide and kind of why did you decide to did somebody say something or was it just kind of a feeling that you you got around around the the recording when you're like at the gym yeah i don't know so it's one of those things where like i seem to notice that people rolled a little differently differently with me when the camera was on i noticed that and it was okay i guess you know and then i also started to see that online like that's like all these jiu-jitsu guys, that's become their thing, showing people rolling and stuff like that. And it's completely okay, I think, in some contexts, especially if the person's open to it. Um, but I've also gotten a lot of messages from people who have rolled with people and they're like, who are recording stuff and they don't like it. And they're like, they don't really want to end up on camera being smashed or whatever. Um, and so it's, it's just an interesting thing. And so I guess my thing was, is like, for me, like... Like for instance, like when you try, like when we were training for fights and stuff back in the day, like you know, you wouldn't share that information with anybody else. That's that's you keep that behind closed closed doors. Like what st what happens in the training room stays in the training room. And so it's kind of like one of those things going back to that. It's like because it's like, well, why am I sharing these rolling videos? Well, I'm doing it for entertainment of other people, and maybe some maybe I can show some stuff that I'm using from time to time. But again, it's just one of those things where it it slowly felt wrong for me. Mm. Like, because I was like, well, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel like I should be doing this. Again, it, it, it this sounds weird to people, but this is just my own perspective on it, right? Um, you know, like anytime there was a submission that I was caught in, I always made sure to include it, um, you know, because it happens sometimes. And like, you know, if JT Torres came and beat the crap out of me, I was like, maybe we got to post this up. Um, and there's some times to record stuff. Like I know Brandon, my, the student that's a big wrestler, he wants to get another rolling with me. Cause our original rolling session that we have on there was when he was a brand spanking new white belt and he was just wrestling and he, you know, whatever, but it's just one of those things where I don't really want to post up all of my roles all the time. Every now and then can be fine, especially if there's a place for it, but I don't want to post all my roles because it's like, first off, even for me, I have to change the way that I roll because I'm on camera. Because now it's like, because now I'm not rolling for my own sake and getting better. I'm rolling for someone else's entertainment, you know, and like, I want to roll sometimes and I don't want to have to kill everyone. Right. And then like that comes into this, like, well, Chewy, well, like you just got beat by so-and-so. Well, I was like, well, that's okay because I wasn't trying to kill the person and I'm not, it's not a competition for me. Right. Competitions for competitions, a competition. Like when I roll, you know, as well as I do, like I get past and I'm trying stuff and people catch me sometimes in the gym. It just happens. Like, and I don't want to. I don't want to expose that to where it's like, first off, I can't do that because I'm trying to entertain people and be this really flashy role or something like that. And also I don't want to, you know, impede upon that because that's how I'm, that's how I get better. Mm -hmm. Right. It's putting myself in bad situations and doing stuff. And so I just, it's one of those things where from my standpoint of my own improvement, I felt like it was getting in the way. And then I think for students, whether they know it or not, I think it affected the way they rolled too. And so I just, uh, I just didn't think it was uh, the wisest decision, you know, that kind of thing. And I've seen like it's popped up more and more where everybody's just like rolling and they're like showing the rules and stuff like that. And obviously, most of the time in a favorable light. And so it's just like one of those things where, you know, there's more people that do that. Let, mm -hmm. let them do it. Like yeah. me, I'm going to keep my training to myself and every now and then I'll post a video up, um, you know, when I decide to.
there's context too and that and you don't get that context sometimes if, if you're just like hey i'm just trying to move around test that techniques people might make assumptions or, or judgments uh right. and, and i think that's i think that taking that out of the equation is kind of is good because I think that, you know, people are going to pass judgment on what they see in a role and it may be like, well, we're working from one position or I'm only working from my, my, my quote unquote dummy side or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I'm working on a new technique, trying to figure it out. Um, but I do, you know, it's hard. I'll tell you this. So somebody asked me to record our, somebody asked to record our role. Yeah. Someone I, I only enrolled with like, sure, once. of course. And, um, it, it changed it for me because I was the the upper belt, yeah, and I didn't know what the intention of of the the recording was essentially. Like, I mean, I, so for me, it like went instantly like from, and they asked me the day before to do it. So for me, it, it was like, okay, I know now. I have to. I'm gonna have to be on it, like, because mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I don't. I'm gonna have to prove a point to, in some way or, or show that like I have a certain skill set and then I'll kind of, you know, I, and for me, it was kind of difficult. Like it, yeah. it, it, it changed, it changed. It, the it didn't make it fun anymore. It didn't make it necessarily fun. I well, wasn't it's public. Yeah. And I didn't know the, the constant context it would be used in or um, how, even if it would be shown or not shown or whatever. But I also felt that, I don't want to crush some or like really make someone else look terrible. Right. Mm -hmm. Or make them. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest jujitsu practitioner. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm decent. I'm pretty good. You know, I can handle a lower belt for the of most course, part. And, and like, you're like, well, do I want to like prove a point of some sort? Mm -hmm. I would do want to not get crushed myself. Like, what is this, the purpose of this role? So definitely when you record, like, I, I don't, I don't give a shit. Like we're playing, we're moving around. Like if you and I, we right. rolled so many times, we know kind of each other's movements and we kind of flow and we move and we're, all, and we're always kind of roll. We don't really roll terribly like hard unless I do something that you don't like. And then, and then you put it on me or, or, or I which almost I love. get you in something and then you turn it up and you give me that yeah. face, which I like, love. I love man. Like when, like I make you turn it on it, I mean, like I did something really bad or did something really good. One yeah. of those two things. And, and that's like, that's something that like I might do from time to time is do like an open mat rolling session. Like, yeah. Hey guys, I'm going to have someone going around recording everyone. And we're just going to like record some stuff and have that. And, and just kind of have it during like open mat sessions and stuff like that. But um, it's just not something I want to do all the time, you yeah. know? And, and, yeah. and, and again, it goes back to this thing where I need my training to be private so I can play. If I can't play in my training, then I can't it, because it's public and I can't just allow myself to make mistakes because I feel like I'm trying to entertain people for likes or for entertainment or because I'm trying to avoid someone like making a shitty comment. Not that I really care about someone's comment, but like if I'm going to make a video, then I want it to do well. And like watching me work through some position that I'm still tinkering with typically isn't going to do the trick. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, again, I need my time to play. And so occasionally I'll do a rolling video of some sort from time to time, but it's just, it's, it's for me, it's not my main focus. And it, that's one of the things that like that started like sometime last year, I just yeah. felt there was something off about it. I, I just didn't like the, where it was going. And so that's why I stopped doing them for the most part. It, it's kind of difficult to say no to if somebody's recording and something, I don't want to be recorded for me. Yeah. It's difficult because I'm like, I don't want to like, you don't want to seem like a bitch. Yeah, and you don't want to seem like you're you're punking out, and you don't want to seem right. like you're you're an ass of any sort. Like you know, you just like okay, fine. But but it does change the the dynamic of the role, um, especially well, like it, if you're if you're the upper belt and yes. you got nothing really to gain from it. Well, or I beat a purple belt or whatever, or I beat a white belt, or or you know, there's not much to gain from it. But like, I think that if you know the other person, you guys have kind of that yeah. chemistry together. I think that it can be it can be fine. Well, and that's the thing that, that I think is important. Like if you know the person really well, then that's fine. No big deal. Right. You, you know, the person, but like, it's, if you don't know the person well enough or, you know, you don't roll, you haven't rolled with them for years, there can be a problem there. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and again, even with like some of the lower belts, like I said, like when I was rolling with some of the students, sometimes I'd notice that they, their game would change when the camera would come on. And I think it was like, almost like it's showtime and I don't want to make Chewy right, look bad or something right. like that. Right. Like where now they're changing the way they roll with me where they can't just enjoy it. You know? Um, now sometimes it actually worked for the better. Like I, there was a couple times, like I rolled with like big Rob and 
Big Rob was like doing cartwheel passes over my darn uh-huh. guard, right? And yeah. he, he got all pumped up because the camera was going, and it actually worked out for the better, made for a fun video. <laughs> yes. Um, and again, those have those places. I mean, obviously, me and Big Rob, like, you know, love to do to death. I mean, we, we've known each other since we were white belts, so that's fine. But um, I just think it's, it, like you said, there is a relationship element to it. And so you have to take your time. And that even goes back to, like, you know, talking talking about tapping someone. Like, you will make, jo- like, you and I could make a joke about tapping one another out. And it would be completely fine because we mm-hmm. would just, we know that, like, we would be talking trash to one another. And it's fine. Absolutely. Um, you know what I mean? And, and, like, there's those guys, you know, in the gym where, like, you know you can make those jokes because your relationship with them is tight enough to withstand that. Um, but just as a general rule, you don't want to, that, that's not how you want to start things off. You know, that's kind of something you can do down the road, down the line, but not in the beginning. Yeah. I I do feel though, there is value like for me personally, or even for like a lower belt. Um, if you maybe don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of competition time or come like video, usually people record their competitions for the most part. Um, I do feel like there's some benefit. Um, if you kind of know how to break down film or movement like you sure. can see some some things you're doing some tendencies maybe that are good or bad mm-hmm. and i think there is value to it it's just the right uh context and the right way to do it you know so i think like is there do you think like if somebody wants to record is there a good way to kind of like bring that up to someone like well yeah i mean if you're recording for your own sake then who cares like if you're recording to like like here's an example we like i wear a heart rate monitor when i roll most of the time right now and I'm syncing up how I feel with where my heart rate is. And what this does is kind of lets me know, okay, man, like I'm, I'm like getting to the point where I'm at the top end of my gear and it's, I'm, I'm about out as far as my engine goes. Right. Mm-hmm. So let me slow down a little bit for a second till I can get my heart rate back down a little bit. Oh, okay, good. Now I'm in back in like the one twenties or something like that. Let's push it a little bit faster. Right. Um, that kind of thing. And so like, you can think about it that way. A lot of times when you watch videos, you can see, what you're doing and remember what that feels like. Cause a lot of times in jujitsu early on, one of the things that people will experience is they feel like they do something, but then they're not. And if you've ever watched yourself do something, it feels completely different than the way it looks. And there is a process where your physical intuition syncs up with the reality of what's going on. So for instance, like over time, you know, by watching yourself, you'll know what it looks like based upon how it feels and that those two will match up versus early on it's one of those things where you feel like you did something really cool then you watch it and you're like that looks so ugly and sloppy (laughs) and so again there's this you know you got to think like when you're when you're doing jiu-jitsu for a long time you develop such a sensitivity in your body that like you just it's such a hard thing you cannot even it's not something you can really explain to someone like my body is so sensitive to touch and just slight movements Like I can, like someone can lock their legs on me, right? Like let's say if someone's in guard, they can lock their legs and instantly I know whether or not their, their left leg is over top of their right or vice versa, right? I can just, I I just know what that feels like. Um, I can feel like small hip movements and I know exactly what move they're going to go for now because of the way that that feels. Because a lot of times in jujitsu, whether you know it or not, you're picking up on physical cues and you're starting to recognize like, you know, what that feeling feels like and what that leads to. And so you know, you have this, this crazy sensitivity to the body. And eventually over time that can sync up with, um, with what it actually looks like. And so I think it's a good idea to do that. Even during your drilling, if your drills, if you do like a lot of drilling in your gym and like your like fast paced movements and stuff like that, it's a really good idea to record that from time to time, set up a tripod or something and record yourself drilling. So you can see what your drilling looks like. And that can give you an idea. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm missing the hand there. Cause you can actually watch it afterwards. Um, and it's, it's one thing to post that. It's another thing to just kind of have it in your own little, your phone or whatever. So you can look at it later for your own, your own sake. You know, those are, that's the difference. You know what I mean? Um, you going up to someone and saying, Hey, listen, I'd love to, I want to get a roll in. I'm watching myself record. Do you mind if I record the role so I can watch it later and kind of like see how I'm doing stuff? No big deal, you know, but it's a different thing to post it up on like, Hey man, I'm, we're going to go, and I'm going to go really hard. And then afterwards, if I, if I catch you in a submission, that's going to end up on a friggin' Instagram video with me, like putting music to the background, you know, do you, do you think that, um, that like etiquette wise, they should mention that to you. Like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go hard. Like you could go into a role and you think it's friendly. And one person doesn't think it's one, one, one of the competitors or one of the people 
competitors. See that uh, is trying, you know, really to take your head off. Like, do you think like, hey, if we're going to record, that's kind of like should be an unspoken thing or, or they should even tell you like, hey, we're going to I'm going to go pretty hard. OK, just just to let you know, like, or do you think that's something that doesn't need to be said? Here's the deal. Here's here's the best way to approach that. Think of think of rolling like dancing. Right. So like. And think, you know, like th think of it like this. If I'm going to dance with someone, right. Let's say I've never met this person. Like, well, let's say I'm getting ready to dance with a woman. I'm not going to immediately go up and start grabbing her butt and pulling her into it, right? <laughs> like, it's like, hold on a second. I don't know you, right? Like, we just met. So we might start dancing a little bit for their part or whatever. Maybe a slow song comes when we get a little bit closer. And maybe by the end of the night, I'm grabbing her butt. Maybe, but maybe I'm not, you know? Maybe she's like, I'm not in the mood for that, whatever. Who knows? I don't know. Not that I go around grabbing women's butts. I'm just saying, like, you know, guys, are, we're just, uh, we're freaking filthy mongrels and, um, you know, w women set our boundaries for us, right? They're like, <laughs> this is this is where it stops, right? Um, just the way we are. And so, you know, with that said, when you're rolling, a great idea is basically to start your rolls off at a nice, smooth pace. If you don't know the person, if you know the person, like you guys, you you know what you're gonna do. Like, like if I roll with Eugene, we have a we have a like a rhythm, a dance rhythm that we go off of, if you will. And so we, cadence. We, so we have a cadence. We have that feeling of each other. We know exactly what it's going to feel like. Um, if you've ever done like salsa dancing or something like that, like you can roll, you can dance with one person to the next and you almost have a different feel to each person. Um, Jess and I have been riding horses and in, in each horse has a slightly different feel. And so if you have a particular horse, you know that this one kind of stutters right before they go into a full canter. You know, this one, like it's w super smooth and they go right into it. You no, know, with no hiccups that you know you you get used to these things well it's the same thing with your rolling right like as you roll with someone you know what kind of role you're going on to like if i roll with some guys like i know that they're a bit more explosive and i've got to be ready for that where some guys are a little bit slower and so i'm more thoughtful of that some guys are more aggressive on leg locks mm -hmm. and so you know you get used to these things but when it comes to like rolling with someone if you've never rolled with them you don't really know start off the rolls like kind of slow and smooth and then see where it takes you. Like when JT Torres and I rolled, we rolled for about 30 minutes straight. And at the beginning of that 30 minutes, it was like slow. We, we, we rolled slow for about five to seven minutes or so. And then slowly it began to pick up until the end we were moving. Like, well, I was moving. He was moving a little bit. I mean, I made him, <laughs> I made him sweat a bit. Um, I made him work. Um, but, uh, you know, he, uh, he was definitely very good. But, you know, then we started moving faster and faster and faster. But it was like this warming up process. And so I yeah. think if you've never rolled with someone, it's a really good idea to try to warm up with the person. Um, and maybe this is just me. Like, that's just the way I like to do it. And that's the way that I've liked to do it since I was in my late 20s. I don't like to go and roll with someone and go bat out of hell after them. Because it's like, I don't know, there's just something about it. It's like, hey, man, let it roll. Okay, now we'll slap this. And then we progress up to that. A lot of times it's really hard for me to be comfortable giving someone my 100% until I get to know them a little bit. And I don't know why that is, but that's just the kind of the way it is. A lot of times when I roll with people, I don't go 100%. And it actually takes a lot for me to get to that point. Hmm. Well, well you don't know. You you say you don't know why you don't go 100%. I mean, you're, you're, let me just like for people that don't know that haven't rolled with you, you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're 100% is, I don't know if I've ever felt it. I've probably felt something close to it. And it's, and it's, you, you felt spurts. It's, uh, it's, pretty pretty demoralizing i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> but like yeah i don't see a reason like because you're you're usually the best guy in the gym you know all things considered you're, you're the best dude in the gym and so like you don't have to nobody really pushes you to that 100 percent. i feel like but you here's an like, example need it you don't need that yeah, gear but here's an example like so like when i was at the origin immersion camp i roll with a guy named um formiga right He's a nine-time Masters World Champion. Very yeah. good. He's been a black belt since I started jiu-jitsu. Like, the, the year before jiu-jitsu is crazy. So when I rolled with him, like, I didn't go crazy hard at first. Like, we picked up the pace towards the end. But in the beginning of the roll, it was very smooth. We were fighting grips and everything else. And we started to progress from there. Like, I didn't go into it like, and like, all right, I'm going to try to smash this dude. I've never rolled with him before. So I wanted to kind of like ease into that, right? Yeah. And so that's how I try to start my rolls. That, that, and again, that doing that just to share with you maybe i don't smash everybody every single round but when i go to places i typically get invited back and when i go to places people like rolling with me you know like there, it's not one of those things where there's there's no pride or ego about it it's like 
like my role with you. Like I want to have a good role with you. Like I, if I'm that worried about competition, I go to competition training or I'll go compete. Right. That's those, that's, that's a time and place for that stuff. My day-to-day training or when I visit places and stuff like that, I don't give a damn whether or not I submit you and look good. I'm there because I'm training. I enjoy training and I enjoy training whether or not I submit everybody in the room or whether I don't submit anybody. I just like training. And so for me, like I'm beyond that of having to submit everybody and beat everybody. Again, this maybe is because I'm a bit older. And so I've proven stuff to myself. You know, yeah. and someone that's a bit younger, maybe they uh, they haven't proven themselves to themselves. And so they're still dealing with that. But for me, I've proven myself. I know what I'm capable of. And so I can turn that gear on when I need it. And then when I don't, then I just kind of go to a different uh, a different gear and I enjoy that pace. And again, whenever I roll someone new before I before I ever turn up the gear faster, I always try to like ease into that process. So they know that, like, listen, I'm here with you. I'm not trying to stand up over top of you. I'm not trying to smash you to the ground. And whatever else, like, I'm going to try to beat you. Technically, I'm going to try to beat you, but we'll do this together, you know, um, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And, and again, it's just the way that I like to do it. And for me, it's it's made for a more enjoyable experience when I visit places or when I roll with people that I've never rolled with before. Yeah, I think it really sucks to, like, feel somebody's 100% right off the bat and getting smashed versus, like, somebody may be better than you, but you're still kind of moving. You're getting some good um, some good technique in, some good movements mm-hmm. and back and forth. And then eventually, you know, obviously – it's almost like a, like a race, you know, like two cars, like going off and one yep. car just, they're going together for a minute. And then the other car just starts to take off mm-hmm. and, and that's normal. That's fine. Somebody's going to be better than the other person. Of course. Um, but like, you know, initially you kind of start out kind of slow and I, I think it, it, um, you, you get a feel for each other too. And I think that I think it's valuable to do that. Yeah. Because I mean, think about like, if you went to a gym, let's just say example, you traveled, went to a gym and you rolled with someone you never rolled with before and you've, you're in a gym you've never been in. Yeah. You're going to be like, okay, how do I roll here? Should I go hard or whatever? And then everybody starts blasting you. It's going to be like, yeah. whoa, I'm not ready for that. Like I remember I went to a gym one time uh, right before the pans. It was like three days before the pans, like before I was going to have to compete. And there's a bunch of black belts in the room. And I figured they were going to go light. Started rolling with them. They're all going crazy hard. I was like, oh, I wasn't ready for this today. Like mm-hmm. I was, I was coming in for an easy round. I was coming in to move a little bit, not to kill or be killed and uh you know and this is like for instance we had a visitor come in we had a couple of visitors come in the other day and when i started rolling with them like the first guy i rolled with uh we rolled for about i think it was a six minute round and we started off that six minute round with like i started probably about a minute and a half of just kind of grip fighting moving around and then i started to progressively move a little faster and get some sweeps and stuff like that you know but again within reason you know because yep. again i'm trying he's visiting my gym i want him to feel welcome um, that kind of thing. Now, again, if it was a competition class or if I was getting ready for a competition and I needed to get into that gear, I have no problem doing that. But again, it's one of those things where if I'm going to try to like smash everybody, like you know, if, if I, that's my goal, then I'll go compete. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to just do it for the internet. You know, I'm not going to just do it inside of the gym. I'm going to go compete, you know, because that's where that kind of stuff really matters. Inside the gym, it's important because it's where we build our confidence. But ultimately for me training is training which doesn't just mean i have to win all the time yeah and so like but if i if if i'm just focused on that when i'll do competition training and then i'll go do a competition where i where i need to do that where i've got to kind of be in that mode yeah i think it's sometimes it can be um like if you show up at a gym and people expect something from you and if you don't go terribly hard or you're not trying to smash everybody then they're like oh well he's not that good right so that that ego kind of comes into it too and you're like well do I want to go really hard and prove something? Or if I go too hard, then I'm like an asshole and like people aren't going to invite me back. Right. So I think it's kind of a balancing act and it's getting a feel for, um, for the environment too. And I think it, it, it's, it's something you have to, cause you know, you're, you're chewy, right? I mean, you're a black belt and you're on, you're on the, the YouTubes and whatnot. And people Mm -hmm. like, Oh, is he for real? So sometimes they'll see you and they'll be like, Oh, let's, let's see if he's for real or not. Right. Right. You know? And and that's just a crazy thing. So it almost like backs you into a corner and you have to, uh, you have to kind of perform. It doesn't because, but it doesn't though. Cause I don't care. Like for you don't. Yeah, it's good. Because like, I mean like, okay, like I've won, I've won some tournaments. Um, like I've, I've beaten guys that are good competitors and, like very skilled black belts. I've won tons of tournaments, right? I've won more gold medals than I remember, right? So like my st- my my status as far as a, a, a skilled, competent black belt, that's undeniable. 
It's been proven time and time again. It's been uh, my ability as a grappler to be competent has been proven since I was, you know, 18 years old, right? Yeah. I've been to, I've been competing in jiu-jitsu since I was 18 years old and winning medals since then. So that's me. Like I'm good. I'm good with me. So if I lose a round or if I'm not going as hard or whatever, I don't, I don't care. You know, and, and if you judge me upon that, I don't really care. That's your own, that's your own business. But nonetheless, inside the training room, that's where I'm still, I'm still going to have my private work, right? That's like, it's the lab. Think about it this way. Going back to that artist's, that writer's work, right? That would be like, like judging someone based upon one role in a training environment. That would be like going in, opening up some random page of this, of their brain dumping journal and then judging them upon that piece of work rather than looking at all the other work that they've published that's been mm -hmm. best-selling and done really well. They're two different things. Like competition is where we publish our work as competitors and as grapplers, right? And if that's what you want to do and you want to show that you're the badass in the world, you go compete, go show it, right? But in the training environment, those are little blips. They're just little like touches of who we are. But again, they're just where we're at at that point. And they're just what we're doing right then and there. And it's hard to say who that person is on a day-to-day -day basis because we've all gone into the gym and had a bad day. We've had good days. We've had days where we felt flat. We had days that we felt like we were better than we've ever been before. We've all been there. Yeah. And so you can't judge someone on like one training session. And if someone has done, someone I, I say that people have done that to me before, um, you know, and again, that's their own issue. Like, and I don't care. Because again, it's just one of those things where for me, I just don't want to always publish my private work, you know, up on the internet. And that's kind of going back to that thing, you know, so I don't really care what people think about it, but at the same time I do to some degree. And that's why I don't publish it because it's mine. Right. Mm -hmm. Just like I don't publish my, I don't publish, I'll publish like books and I have writings and I publish an email, but I don't share people like the the private, like my private journal that I have that like is basically where I dump out ideas and, and just write down stuff. Right. That's for me. That's not for anybody else. And so, yeah, no, it, it totally makes sense. And I think there, it, there's something good about keeping some of your training private. Like if you are going to compete and things like that, if you have a competition coming up, obviously it's like, you don't want to show what you're working on. You don't want to show your a game, your game plan, that type of thing. So that's just a, I mean, kind of a no brainer. I think it's, it doesn't need to be said, but, but, you know, you don't want to like, obviously you're training, but you want to keep that stuff private. Um, you don't want to show people exactly what you're doing. I think that's part of it because people might be watching your tendencies and what, how you're moving and, and studying that. And you don't give them any extra material. Very possible. It's very possible yeah. that that, yeah. that goes on. So guys, hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that made sense to you again. I know, um, the idea maybe was a little different. Um, and again, it's not to discourage people from being able to record videos and stuff like that. Um, it's just one of those things to keep in mind. You want to, you, no matter what, even if you are recording videos for your training and stuff like that, you want to have time for private training too. You want to have time where you can just be yourself and you can just, well, not even be yourself, but you can just let loose and you don't have to worry about anybody else judging you on that stuff um, or anything like that. It's again, it's an important thing. Uh, it's an important thing for every artist. Every artist I've ever read about has had some space for that. Mm -hmm. And as martial artists, we are artists. We have to basically our games are a product of our hard work as well as our creativity, our imagination, and everything else. And so you have to protect that. And so just keep that in mind. Yeah, again, I think uh, I think Chewy, like um one one thing I'd like to add is just that it it some of it is play. Like we play around and we learn through play. Like kids mm -hmm. learn through like as adults, like we're learning a skill, we're playing around. And sometimes we'll fall into a certain technique or a certain position that we didn't anticipate. And that's how we learn. And then you investigate further. So I think like having that ability to play, kind of play around, joke around, even like when we're, when we're moving around, I think is it has some really good benefits. And I think it can, you know, actually open up your eyes to some different avenues for techniques. Yeah. And in this, the evidence or the, the studies that they've done on human like psychology and like um, the brain and states of being it's pretty like they're pretty much like they, they essentially back up what everybody has probably felt intuitively the optimal state for learning is not being too aroused like if you're too aroused and too on edge then it actually makes it worse yeah. because your body will then sort of zero in it'll make its its breath of information much smaller because it's it's basically stressed out and so you can think about if you've ever been in a really hard like stressful role or competition and you've had a brain fart 
or if you've been in a stressful situation and you can't think of something and you have a brain fart, that's what that's a product of. Basically, in in the effort to give you limited choices so you can make yourself out of this stressful situation, sometimes useful information is cut off. But at the same time, it's not too relaxed because if you're too relaxed, then you don't have the necessary oomph to your training and to your, your learning that you need. There's kind of a middle ground where you're basically you're aroused a little bit, but you're still relaxed. And that's where your optimal state of learning is, where basically you're energetic, you're excited about what you're doing, and your brain is still open enough that you can draw upon different connections and information that may not seem initially tied together. And a lot of times mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. We're, we're bringing stuff in. And so, again, when you pop a camera on or you tell someone, hey, this is going to end up on the Internet, not everyone, but a lot of people will begin to move to a more aroused state where then it, it begins to impede their ability to learn. And so, again, if you're getting into a, a situation where you're like, hey, we're going to throw this up on the Internet, we're going to roll really hard today, completely OK, do it. But also consider that if it's just a regular training session and you guys are working on stuff, yeah, it may or may not be the best time for that sort of thing. Um, and then again, also going back to it. Don't talk about tapping someone else out because again, talking and tapping is 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 just as it's worse to me. And again, what does that do when someone rolls with someone who is going to like gloat about it or talk about tapping? Then what are they going to do when they roll with you? They're instantly going to be into a more stressful, aroused state that then gets rid of the play, that then gets rid yeah. of their ability to learn, and then that's gonna that's gonna find its way on top of you too, because as they start rolling harder, you're naturally gonna roll harder, and before you know it, you guys are basically just having a competition match, yeah. which maybe is the right thing for the right time, but in that state, if you're trying to learn, not so much. Yep. Um, but again, hopefully that podcast was useful to you guys, give you some ideas to chew on. And again, big thanks to our sponsors for helping make this thing happen to bring it to bring it to you guys. If you guys haven't checked out Charles Webb's products or if you've never used CBD before, I encourage you to try it out. Again, for me, CBD is part of my daily recovery regimen as a nearing almost 40 year old man who still likes to train with 20 something year old men <laughs> on a regular basis. Um, you know, I've got to do, I've got to pull out all the little recovery, like tricks and tactics and stuff like that, that I can. And CBD is one of the big ones. I've, I notice a discernible difference when I use it versus when I don't. I've come off of CBD several times to see how it feels. And, you know, just to prove to myself that this isn't some sort of placebo. And uh, I noticed that the way it seems to improve, um, like my sleep quality, as well as the way that my body feels uh, the next day after training. And again, this is along with a really good diet, sleep, and everything else that I'm trying to work towards. Uh, but again, if you are someone that's interested in improving your recovery or uh, in, interested in trying CBD, again, because I know there's a lot of benefits that people talk about out there, then I encourage you to try it for yourself. Everybody's body is a little different. Everyone responds to supplements and medications and stuff like that differently. So check it out, try it out. Um, and if you want to use it from or use a CBD product from a really top notch company, a company that third party tests everything that they put out there, then check out Charles Webb. Their website is charlesweb.com. Promo code is jujitsu20 for 20% off the order. And again, you'll get yourself a sweet discount and you help support the podcast. Also, thanks to Epic Roll at epicrollbjj.com. Again, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, Matt is very passionate about what he does with the the gear and the t-shirts and stuff that he makes from the designs, which he makes himself and which I think it shows because he's very passionate about that to all the little extras that he includes in the packages that he sends to people. People a lot of times will send me a, a picture and say, man, that Matt dude's awfully nice. And they'll show me a letter from Matt that was written out to them, um, thanking them. You know, I'm not saying he does that for everyone, but again, it, there's been many times where that's happened. Again, I think that, uh, that passion comes through with his work in both the quality of the stuff that he sends out and also the quality of the designs, the way that everything looks. I'm a big fan of his his gear that he sells. And it's, again, why I'm, I've done partnerships with him in the past and while I'll continue to do so. And if you want to check out some of his stuff, you can go to epicrollbjj.com and the promo code is jujitsu for 15% off. Also, thanks to Manscaped for helping support the podcast. If you guys are a man or if you have a man in your life that needs to step up their grooming game or you just want some really cool products, um, again, I you know most of us as guys, we have trimmers and stuff like that. We have colognes. We have body washes and stuff like that. But they've got some really good products. Um, and again, I when we first started dealing with them, I'm not going to lie, the whole idea about talking about a ball trimmer or whatever – wasn't really my thing and so i was like i don't know eugene let them uh let them send that to us first and i'll try it out 
And mm-hmm. uh, but I've tried it. I actually really like the products. And after I love using it, the, man. Yeah, you, after using the products, I thought they did a really good job, both with the packaging that it comes with, the actual quality of the product, the way that it feels, and also the actual function of it. Right? It's like one of those things where they their products do look really cool. They put a lot of marketing money into the packaging and everything else. And when you get the product, it delivers. You know, the the trimmer, for instance, that little sucker. Like I use it for my beard down to whatever else I'm going to trim. And the darn thing holds a charge forever. I feel like I rarely have to charge the thing. It's waterproof and I can take the guard off and I don't like cut myself up or anything. And again, I use it on my beard and everything else. And so, again, if you guys want to uh, check out some of their products, check them out at manscaped.com. Promo code is jujitsu20 for 20% off the order and you get free shipping. And also, if you guys want to support the podcast directly, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. Along with the joining the Patreon, you'll get access to some exclusive content. We just uh, recorded a clip talking about me using a heart rate monitor and some of the things that I'm looking for when I'm using it. Because again, I'm almost 40 and so just something I'm a little interested in. So I've been kind of using a heart rate monitor recently. Um, and kind of using it to check out certain metrics. And so I talk about it there. Also, along with that, you'll get access to a lot of content. One of the things that we put in there is a warm-up routine that Eugene did. So uh, Eugene, whenever I have camps at my gym, I have Eugene do a warm-up routine. And basically, the way this warm-up routine happened is I came up to Eugene you know, a couple of years ago or a year ago when we started the camps at my gym. And I said, hey, listen, man, take people through a 20 to 25-minute warm-up with movements that would specifically target areas that are affected by jiu-jitsu training, right? Because we all know that jiu-jitsu kind of takes its toll on the body. It negatively affects several different areas of our body with muscle imbalances and things like that. So I was like, hey, listen, you know, give me something that would help those particular areas. And so we came out with a, a series, we did them, and we've been doing it with each camp group that comes through. And every time we do it, Everybody talks about how loose their hips feel, how better, how much better their back feels or how much better their shoulders feel and things like that. And so, again, if you would like access to that, that short routine, again, you could do this before training. You could do this at home. Um, and again, with some of the, the stretches, if you're at home, maybe after a hot shower at night, you mm-hmm. can just hold the stretches for a longer period of time. And they're not just stretches too. some of them are activation exercises, which help again, target the specific imbalances that we have. And if you guys want to get access to it, you can do so by joining the Patreon at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. It's a free bonus that you'll get included with your membership. And last but not least, guys, if you want to join the Chew Crew email newsletter list and get a email from me daily sharing some different ideas, philosophical ramblings that I have, ideas that I have on training and just different stuff, books I'm reading, as well as exclusive discounts and offers that I don't release anywhere else. You can do so by going to my website at jujitsu.net slash join. By joining that email newsletter, you'll also get instant access to three free jujitsu eBooks. One is on designing a game plan for your jujitsu game. One is on drilling strategies to get the most from your training and then the last one is some at-home studying tips again from a black belt's perspective some really good um at-home studying strategies for you so if you're not able to train or whatever it's some ideas for you so uh, again hopefully uh all that stuff helps you guys and uh again thank you so much for being a part of the podcast and joining us once again and again, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, anything at all, you can send them to us by two different ways. You can either send them to us by Instagram, by going to Instagram and then putting in the Jiu-Jitsu podcast and you can send us a message there. Or you can send us an old email uh, by sending it to the Jiu-Jitsu podcast at gmail.com. And those are a couple different ways. But uh, again, either way is fine. But if you guys have some feedback or if you have questions, shoot it there. And um, also, if you guys are just, if you're listening to this, or you're still listening to it, it means you're one of the, the diehards. If you're listening to this from time to time, feel free to tag us in the, um, tag me and the podcast. So if you're ever doing it around, tag the podcast, Jiu-Jitsu podcast, and then also tag Jiu-Jitsu. And I'll, I'll share your stuff, you know, be happy to share it. And uh, we appreciate it. So again, we, it just helps grow the podcast because people see it. And then we'll give you a little love and share it as well. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you.